Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new scam that's been going around. Now, this exists in a couple of forms. This is the GitHub version, which has been phishing maintainers of open source repositories, probably hoping to get their credentials so they could then turn their open source repositories into a supply chain attack. But this has also been happening, if you've seen any of my clicking all the ads on sketchy sites videos, those pop-up ads are also being turned into this. Now, we've seen a previous version of the I'm not a robot, where the objective is just to get you to enable notifications where they might uh, ship potentially unwanted programs or possibly even malware. Well, this one is direct. So, what happens? I'm not a robot. Windows button all. Control V. Enter. Now, look, at the end we've got I'm not a robot, recapture, verification, and they even give you a number, which doesn't change, by the way. <laughs> So, we open a hidden PowerShell and we execute code. Now, I've actually yeah, already archived the source code, uh, but let's just see what would happen if we did this the normal way. So, now that we've got MITM proxy on, go ahead. And immediately, uh, we send a hit to uh, the githubscanner.com domain, but it doesn't seem to go any further than that. Now, lucky for me, I have all the information saved so that uh, we won't run into that problem. Because uh, I assumed this wouldn't have a long shelf life given the amount of tension it's gotten and the fact that they've got GitHub. So, like, this is a pretty unique domain. So, what happens is, and we can check if this is still up, it downloads this file, which we can still download. Download unverified file. This re I think it's supposed to read like IE6. I think it was originally IE6, but they changed it to IE6E. And then we get a file path where it moves it to temp sys setup.exe. It starts the process. It does. It's already hit some dot shop domains in DNS, but let's see if it actually. It seems like the weird thing is while the dropper and distribution for this malware is still online, the actual. Uh, C2 servers are not, meaning that the Luma Stealer is still being dropped, but it doesn't actually execute, which is kind of hilarious. So if you've seen any of my videos with Luma Stealer, you know what would happen if it worked. Basically, everything on the computer, the passwords, credit cards, everything saved to this user's profile, would in fact be going up. Quite a clever scam, if I will say so myself, and if you want to be clever, uh, that's where today's sponsor comes in. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an engaging education platform that helps you learn anything you want in STEM, science, technology, and mathematics. Brilliant is great because unlike just providing textbooks or written resources, it lets you engage and actually learn by doing tests and interactive exercises. Have you ever been curious? about how ChatGPT really works? Well, Brilliant has a new course on how large language models actually work. To try all that Brilliant has to offer, click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off of an annual premium subscription after your free 30-day trial ends. Now back to our main programming. So let's see if there's any persistence here. Main thing we do is we just go in order runs and we say, okay, is there anything, anything here? That shouldn't be. And the most likely abused ones is going to be Task Scheduler. These all look normal. Services can sometimes have... Eh, nothing here looks problematic. Okay, so no obvious persistence. So this is one and done. Which makes sense, given it's a very stealthy uh, stealer. Now, go over to DNSpy, because the first level of this is in fact .NET. So we can just open that up and see what's in here. Now what we have inside of .NET is a bunch of DLLs that are being imported. So we're actually calling out, because .NET is, does have the ability to call what we might call native code, like the basic, the lower level Windows code. And we can see a couple of these are being used. First of all, we use the load library function, which actually allows us to call these. I'm going to uh, you, you can kind of guess if you don't know, or you can go and look at the Windows API if you don't know what any of these do, but I'm pretty confident that this is a pointer and this is the name of the library. Virtual Protect, I actually had to look this one up because I wasn't entirely sure, but basically uh, the code that they want to change the memory protection to 
goes here and the previous code goes here. This is the actual block of memory that we're going to change it on, and this is the size of said block of memory. So first of all, we have this uh, for loop. It's doing some sort of manipulation, XORing uh, a bunch of data, and we have some constant. We have the actual unpack. So we run this on two different pieces of data, and then we run this, uh, virtual protect. Now the 64 here is going to turn this into an un... This is going to become executable code now. Now by setting a breakpoint, after that is called, we now have we now should uh, be able to get the memory. So the end result is to use the same method that I used in a different video, where we simply using dnspy we edit the packer uh, to turn it into an unpacker that doesn't actually execute the code, and then we can take a look at what we've unpacked. So this is the first file, and this one is very small, and there's threads, there's some stuff in here, here, but there is no disassembly. If we go over to the linear view in Binary Ninja, which does have pretty good support for shellcode. So now let's try this one. Now, if, whenever you're importing shellcode, or however your software does it, you always want to make it, always want to do it like this. And in this one, we could have some... Okay, so the actual reason the shellcode is broken is because while... It does, uh, the array is of integers, these are actually bytes, so let's see what happens if we do this. And now Binary Ninja automatically recognizes this as x86 shellcode, I'm just going to add windows to it to make it a bit easier to understand. And now all of our strings look healthy, but we still haven't gotten any assembly. Now Binary Ninja thinks this second one is 64-bit, so let's see why it thinks that. Well, it's definitely a portable executable, and then with a bit more cleaning uh, to deal with more extra bytes, and we do in fact get something that makes sense. Although it has been detected as being pure assembly, that could just be because it's shellcode, and the first dump is still nonsensical. But let's let's see now that we have uh, a valid PE what it's going to do, and now we have. What looks quite valid, although it is probably still not going to be the final, final uh, phase of this. Reason I know that is because we're not, uh, we're not seeing any indication. Let's see, no domains. Now, how does the web part of the scam work? Because we'll, I think we're going to leave that here for now. I might uh, go over a bit more of that uh, and the unpacking process over on school uh, for people who are into that. If you want to go deep into reverse engineering, but now let's get back to this. So how, what exactly is the code here? So the, I'm not a robot button, first of all. We'll just go through expect up. So that's got an ID of verify button. So what you always do is you can search and see, okay. So how does it, so there's a script here. Get off the script. Verify button. It gets the background and then it adds an event listener. So we get the capture text, which is kind of funny. It's not, it's obviously not it. And then we manipulate the clipboard. Because the clipboard is surprisingly unprotected. So yeah, websites can just modify your clipboard. To me, that seems like a potential security risk for a myriad of reasons. But here, so the malicious command is already copied in. And you're told, okay, we'll press Windows O, press Control V, and press, press Enter. Interestingly, none of this is very obfuscated. Like this download.txt is totally clear what it does. It doesn't do anything that interesting, I might add. It's just executing a file, uh, which is this file. And I will also point out that unlike many InfoStealer campaigns, this was detected from day one. Pretty much. Maybe the antivirus industry is finally catching on to InfoStealers. And here we go, for comparison, a real CAPTCHA. We'll upload this, and then we'll also, as I always do, we'll also upload just to see. Oh, wait a second. Unless that's one of my unpack. Oh, no, no, that's, that, that is my unpacker that I just uploaded. Okay, I was thinking, wait a second, is that unseen? That's weird. But okay, let's see. And it does start to get 
Luma Steeler detections once we have uh, unpacked a few layers, although we're also getting a packed Zold, which is the packer, but we also get a Luma detection, which we weren't before. I'm not finding much information on that packer, but yeah, it does seem like it's probably got one more layer of packing, but there we go. So that's going to be all for this video. Do not fall for this. Uh, there's a couple of these capture scams out there. First of all, if you get an email going to a weird website, don't click it. And know that a capture never works that way. It would actually be more intelligent if they made it look like a two-factor authentication. Uh, a capture should never leave the browser. It should never require you to enable things like notifications. Uh, never required to execute code. Any of that is quite a blatant scam. So that's going to be all for me for now. Bye.